welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I am the author of the blog, CapturingWonderland.com. So you want to be a homesteader. If it's your dream to buy land and start a homestead of any size, I have compiled a list of seven plus homesteading skills for you to learn right now. Don't wait for someday. Just because you can't do it all right now doesn't mean that there's no preparation for you to do. There are definite skills that you want to start learning right now simply because all of these skills will take time to master. And even if you can't do some of them, you can start your research. So let's talk about the seven plus homesteading skills that you can start learning immediately to start a homesteading journey wherever you're at in life right now. The first skill that you can learn right now is how to grow food. There are two main ways that you can start growing food of your own, either from seed or by starts. Both of them have their pros and cons, their advantages and disadvantages, and I have gone into greater depth about the advantages and disadvantages on the blog post, so I will leave a link to that in the notes below if you want to go ahead and check that out. The six main things to consider when you want to start growing food of your own are location you're planting, optimal sun or shade exposure for the seeds or plants that you will be growing, soil nutrients if it's lacking, you'll want to get it tested, go ahead and get that done so that you know if you need to amend your soil at all. The plants, either the seeds or the starts, your frost dates to know exactly when to plant those plants, mulch to cover the base of the plants for weed control, as well as moisture control. Also, plant food and a watering schedule. Those are all great things to consider and to plan on. The number two skill you wanna learn is food preservation. There are several ways that you can preserve food, but the five main ways I'm gonna focus on today are drying, pickling, fermentation, canning, and freezing. Here are the six most common methods for drying food used today. Sun drying, air drying, solar drying, oven drying, electric dehydrating, which is the most popular, and dehydrating in a microwave or an oven. Pickling and fermentation. Pickling is preserving vegetables and fruit in brine or vinegar. The process by which they preserve is called anaerobic fermentation, which can preserve perishable ingredients for weeks and months. So whether you're preserving with vinegar or salt, both are great options for food preservation as well as health benefits. There are similarities to each process like storage conditions, preserving nutrients, change in flavor and texture, as well as the presence of carbon dioxide. However, raw fermented food contains live probiotics, which are essential in restoring gut biobalance, thus giving fermented food more health benefits than pickling. Let's talk about canning. There are two main ways to can food, water bath canning and pressure canning with an actual pressure canner. Canning is the process of applying heat to food that's sealed in a jar in order to destroy any microorganisms that can cause food spoilage. Proper canning techniques stop the spoilage by heating the food for a specific period of time and killing these microorganisms. During the canning process, air is driven from the jar and a vacuum is formed as the jar cools and seals, which is why you would hear that popping sound. Freezing is an easy beginner's food preservation method. The two things it does require is obviously electricity and freezer space. You can toss most fruits and some vegetables in the freezer with no special preparation. I'm all about no prep. So these are things I pop in our freezer during the growing season. Peppers, herbs, fruit, stone fruits, and even leftovers. Growing medicinal and native plants and foraging. Medicinal plants. So what kind of plants do you need to grow? Melissa K. Norris, this is a quote specifically from her. She has a post all about medicinal plants and growing them for your homestead. She says, think about the things you need on a consistent basis. For us, it's remedies for the cold and flu, stuffy and congested noses, sore throats, earaches, and headaches. These are the common basic cold flu symptoms that everyone usually deals with at least once a year. A few medicinal plants, which most are herbs, consequently, are sage, echinacea, lemon balm, feverfew, elderberry, roses, rosemary, thyme, basil, oregano, and garlic. 
There are also medicinal plants that cross over into the foraging aspect because they may grow naturally locally for you. Two medicinal plants that grow locally for me are mullion and plantain. So check out a local Facebook group for native plants in your area and see what you can find. There may also be books specific to your state that can help with identification. Native plants, find them in local nurseries, forage for them, as I just mentioned, or you can grow them from seed. Since native plants are accustomed to their habitat, they are able to hold water better than non-native plants. They withstand the environment better than non-native plants, withstand harsh weather, and grow back the following year. Because they are adapted to the specific climate of the region, native plants can defend themselves against indigenous insects, fungi, and disease. So as far as ease of growing, I would recommend you definitely putting native plants into your gardening, especially for a beginner gardener. Native plants kind of take out a lot of the guesswork. You do not need to amend your soil when you're growing native plants since they are already adapted to the soil that you have in your area, which also means they are budget friendly. Foraging, not just a mushroom thing. You may not think that foraging is a homesteading skill, but as I see it, homesteading is all about self-sustainability and relearning heritage skills that were once prevalent in our cultures. So let's talk about composting. There are two main ways, as I see it, to create beneficial compost for your gardens. A compost pile that you used like kitchen scraps to build, or even leaves and such, we'll get more into that, or a worm farm. Creating and maintaining a compost pile. There are four main components to starting a compost pile. Number one is to choose a bin. You can make a compost bin out of practically anything. Make your own bin or buy one from your local garden supply. Learn what to compost. Almost anything goes except for oils, bones, meat, and dairy products, which can attract large pests to your outdoor pile, like armadillos, raccoons, things that you don't want digging around in your yard. Number three is pick a location. You want a place that's out of the way but still convenient enough to get to easily. Number four, layer on your organic matter. And there is a lot more information for that in the blog post. Starting a worm farm, let's talk about vermicomposting. A worm farm is a natural, sustainable, and incredibly effective way to create nutrient-dense compost for gardening. Worm composting takes advantage of the natural process of worm digestion. Happy, full, and pooping worms provide you with virtually limitless supply of high quality fertilizer for your garden. The concept of a worm farm is absolutely genius. I have seen some really cool YouTube tutorials where you take an 18 gallon bin, just, you know, a $5 bin that you find from Walmart, and you poke holes all in the bottom of it, and you actually stack them on top of each other, and then you use a specific type of worm, which is a red wiggler, and you order them. And how you set it up is laid out step by step on the website in the blog post, which will be linked below. What is worm farming and how do you do it? One of the best and most cost effective ways to generate nutrient dense compost is to start a worm farm. This compost is ideal for home gardens while being far easier to attain and less expensive than other composting methods. So if you're on a budget, this is definitely the way that I would go. The next skill to learn is first aid. Being a homesteader means being self-sufficient, not just in everyday tasks, but in every aspect of your life. It includes learning how to deal with accidents and emergency situations, especially first aid and CPR. You never know when an accident will befall you or a family member, so it's always good to know what to do in case of an emergency. Things to consider when planning how to be prepared for first aid in your homestead. Number one is keep a first aid kit handy. You can visit my post, I have one written specifically about how to build the best first aid kit for your home. Plus in that post, I have a download from my ebook that is totally free for you. That is all about basic first aid kit resources, plus a checklist. Create a DRSA BC deep action plan. Danger response, send for help, airway, breathing, CPR, defibrillation. There is a download for information on that on the post as well. How to do CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. There is a CPR and a choking guide also available to download on my website. 
A few other injuries to be prepared for are choking, poisoning, bleeding wounds, broken bones, heat stroke, bug bites, and insect stings, snake bites, sprains, and strains, and even the occasional nosebleed. Let's talk about caring for chickens, the next skill on my list. There's a lot to like about raising chickens in your backyard. The eggs are a real temptation, tastier and fresher than any store-bought eggs, and better for baking too. The shells, along with the chicken poop, can be tossed right into the compost pile. I'm gonna say it, chicken poop is amazing, and I wish I was able to put it in a compost pile. Much of the day, the birds entertain themselves picking at grass, worms, beetles, which is another benefit to having chickens, is they are actually a really great form of pest control as far as unwanted insects and all of the good things that go into making those yummy farm eggs. Plus, with their keen eye for insects, pests, chickens make for great gardening companions. Remember though, nothing good comes easy. Caring for chickens is obviously no walk in the park. So there's 10 things that I think that you should know before getting chickens. Number one, to check your laws. Number two, you don't need a rooster. Number three, get the right size coop. Number four, hens only lay for a few years. Number five, hens don't lay year round. Now, if you can't own chickens, at least research it. Um, one great resource I have found is actually a YouTube channel by Justin Rhodes. He has so many resources. He actually started out by doing resources specifically for raising chickens. You may be in the same position that I am. It is illegal for me to even own a few backyard chickens in my small rural town. So if you aren't currently living in an area that will allow even a few backyard chickens, that's okay. Start your research now. Read books, watch YouTube videos, as I suggested, um, on the care that keeping chickens requires. You want to have your brain already in that mode before you can even go down to the, the farm store and pick up some chicks. Owning animals is a responsibility, so you really wanna be prepared. Number seven, heritage skills, from scratch meals and baking. Food, its cultivation, preparation, and communal consumption has long been considered a form of cultural heritage, a dynamic living product. Food creates social bonds as it simultaneously marks off and maintains cultural differences. Cooking from scratch is a lost art, so let's be artists. Nine ways you can start cooking from scratch right now are one, make your own baked goods. Two, whip up your own dairy products. Do you know how easy it is to make homemade whipped cream? It's super easy and it's delicious. Three, dry your own foods. Four, prep your own meats. Five, get into canning. Six, sip on a homemade beverage. Seven, treat yourself to a scratch made dessert. There's really nothing in the store that you can buy that would taste the same. Eight, chew on homemade snack foods. And nine, make your own condiments and spice blends. Well friends, I hope I have given you plenty of skills to think about mastering in the coming year and even down the road until you are able to purchase that dream homestead of yours. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel if this is content that appeals to you, and don't forget to share it with friends that you think would like it as well. Thanks again. Bye.